Well, I turned about 50 years old and realized that I had never been to a rainforest or a jungle before, which was kind of absurd because my favorite book when I was a child was The Jungle Book, and I just love jungle. So I came down to Costa Rica to kind of check it out about eight years ago, and I just fell in love with the place. It was just remarkable. Tirimbina is a non-for-profit organization working on conservation, research, and education in order to have the right information that we can pass to the kids. We are trying to provide opportunities for researchers all around the world to come here and go into the reserve and dig into the knowledge that the forest uh, keep about the importance of the rainforest for the community, for the whole Costa Rican society, and of course for the whole world. But it goes above and beyond just teaching students how to identify things. Now we're looking at the relationships that these organisms have with each other in the jungles. We have actual experiments that we're setting up to test these hypotheses. And that's where we have the interns. <laughs> There's a certain etiquette that we have to prescribe to when we come out to the jungle. And part of it is what you're wearing. And that's because you want to wear high boots to protect yourselves from not only snakes that you might step on because they all look like twigs, but also from ants. I've had people ask me almost hourly where they wear their tevas and the answer is no because you know there's just too many things that can bite you. And to give the students an opportunity to do this, to see what the potential is down here, and to meet these incredible people and work with them, you know, because there's all kinds of stuff to do here. Oh, okay, I'll hang it Okay, that's good. As Eric's an arborist and understands tree climbing, he has been very instrumental in the design of this experiment. Because originally we weren't going to do anything in the canopy at all. And uh, then Eric said, well, what if we got everything up there? I can do that for you. And that turned into a whole different ball game. So we're very excited about what we're doing. We're some of the few people that are actually studying the canopy. And nobody's actually doing it the way we're doing it. Yeah. Set up the rope so we wants to go up, can get a chance to go up and check it out, see what's in the forest canopy. The single line technique is easier. You just inchworm your way up using your legs. But moving around in a canopy, this is a lot better because you can adjust the length of it. You can go you can go out on the branch with all those legs as you walk out on the branch. As you walk back in towards the end of the tree, you tighten up on it. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. So the bromeliads have what we think are homeostatic mechanisms to maintain water quality. And of course, this is important not only for the, the health of the bromeliad, but also for the health of the organisms that live within the bromeliad, including the poison dart frogs, specifically the blue gene frog that doesn't lay its eggs there, but carries its tadpoles up there and rears the tadpoles in the bromeliad. And so our initial thought was that we'd be attracting these tadpoles in these bases. The answer, of course, was no. But uh, it didn't matter because we realized that this was a great opportunity to study the water chemistry of the bromeliads. And the different colors are important because they tell us of different organisms that will grow at different wavelengths. You, uh, how do you say, you take weight from your legs, that's the moment that you want to pull up the down one, right? On this one? Yes. Yeah, yeah, no and way then on it. when you are doing strength, up, yeah. then you will. Well, I move this one all the way, all my way is in my feet. Everything will make sense. Try again. Try three times. Double check everything. Okay, I'm looking good. Now I'm going to take it off. Take Students off. being able to come down here at the community college level and study biodiversity, this is huge for students that are trying to go on and and actually get into graduate school and, and do other things in terms of academia. Most of these opportunities don't come their way until they're in graduate school. Now there are a lot of institutions out there that will provide internships to students 
but they insist that they've had some work in original experimentation. They've done original science. And so that's my go out here, is to develop some projects that are original science, that potentially for publication, that the students could author, of course. Um, and um, in that regard, that gives, us, that gives them the edge whenever they apply to graduate schools. They are people that they're going to consider very much because they've got experience that nobody else does. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to give the students an edge. Um, so hopefully, again, we can have lots of people come out and uh, take advantage of that. We had a lot more ants out here last night, so we may want to do this in the evening. Sure. Let's just see. We might just leave this set up. There's one. Looks like there's one in here. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and just tap that one. What we're trying to do is determine what ants like to eat. We hope to sort this out according to species of ants. This morning we harvested some ants that have, uh, have had a preference for certain types of foods and not for others. It's kind of exciting. In a little while we're going to go to a different locality altogether and harvest that ant population. It looks like the experiment is working. I mean, they're not just randomly looking for food. They're actually making a choice. So this is sort of like an ant smorgasbord here. Ultimately, we want to do maybe four or five locations down here, and we're also going to be testing ant populations in the canopy. So uh, between all that, we should have a pretty good idea of A, what types of ants are here, and B, what they like to eat. So in the future, if somebody wants to study a particular species of ant, they can look at our data and say, well, to attract these ants or to find out what they're here, we'll set out food X and see if we can attract them. The rainforest is really a classic example of not just the survival of the fittest, but what makes something fit. What makes something fit in the forest is the ability to cooperate with other species. The forest is really about interdependence of species. It's about cooperation. And that, of course, is the way our group is. I mean, obviously, we all have to cooperate in order to, to make this trip enjoyable and to make ourselves uh, safe in the forest. We all rely on each other. Um, this is the way Merritt College is. Merritt College is the United Nations of community colleges. You know, we don't have little cliques and groups and separate people. We don't. You know, we, otherwise, nobody makes it. Right? And so we've all learned that regardless of, of what we look like, what our culture is, what our background is, uh, what our financial situations are, we all have to work together. Kirimin es un lugar fantástico, un lugar lleno de naturaleza, de vida, de energía, un lugar para disfrutar la, el bosque, para disfrutar el río, para disfrutar todos los recursos, la fauna y la flora. Bienvenidos, eh, visítenos eh, buscando una experiencia diferente, es un lugar maravilloso para eh, conocer la esencia de Costa Rica, pero sobre todo la esencia del bosque tropical. Peralta TV, programs that matter.